Um, now, being a professor at UNLV, um, you get to help direct and or get to help um, give your pass down your wisdom and advice to your students who are interested in being directors and producers and writers, and um, get to take your experiences and help shape theirs. Um, what are some of the things that um, that they come to you like asking, especially like it being um, <coughs> a different industry, maybe in Vegas or just doing the short films? How it compares? Well, it's a two-part thing. Um, we 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 teach the basics of filmmaking and mm -hmm. storytelling, and you know you'll you'll learn all of those things which you need to know. But the thing that I keep trying to plant is um, we 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 know history has taught us that. Um, you know, the, a few years ago there was no Google, mm -hmm. and and a few years beyond that there there was no internet. And a few years beyond that there were no computers. So, what is going to be someone's job in five years from now or ten years from now is not something we know at this point. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're going to be an artist, um, whether it's an actor or or a writer or a director editor, you know, you have to start thinking about um, what, is, what is the future going to be? What kind of things can I do that's not what Professor Schmoller does? I mean, uh, I just produced a movie called Thor at the Bus Stop and I'm trying to sell it. And mm -hmm. it's the first time I've had uh, a film that didn't already have distribution because before this everything I ever did was already plugged into a pipeline that had a revenue stream and now I have a film uh, in a market it's unfortunate that we're in a recession because th that has sort of um, made everything difficult no one is buying movies right now um, but on top of it there you know anyone can make a movie and, and everyone is making a movie a feature film Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many future films being made in Las Vegas right now. It's it's mind-boggling. Wow. I mean, that's good news for us actors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, most of them aren't paying anything. Right. But it is an opportunity to get, mm -hmm. you know, to um, now have, you know, a record of your work, something that you can show on, on mm -hmm. actors' reel. Uh, the problem is going to be, you know, how do these movies find the screens to mm -hmm. show on? How do they find a, a, a place to, to show on? Um, the studios, before the recession, were making 600 movies a year. Because of the recession, they're making about 400 movies a year. But there are about 15,000 movies in the U.S that are being made. Oh, wow. Jeez. So if the industry could support 600 two years ago, what are they going to do with 15,000 movies? Right. So the filmmakers have to figure out a way how, and, and it's something that I'm exploring, how do, we, how do we get our film known and what do we, you know, what new way can, can we figure out on the internet to, um, to find a place for people to watch mm -hmm. our work. Mm -hmm. To market it, basically. Yep. So it's the new technology and, and how inexpensive it is to make a, a movie is a blessing and, and a curse because, right. you know, what you can, you know, anybody can now make a short film, anybody can now make a movie, but what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. right. How do you make how do you make money from it? Mm -hmm. And you know, we saw from Paranormal Activity that you could make a movie for no money. I think it cost fifteen thousand dollars, and it made millions. It yeah. was a yes. huge it success a and launched careers. Mm -hmm. uh, and that happens every year. Um, so, and it's what fuels the dream for everybody.
Yes. Was there anything that uh, inspired you or fueled your dream? Like, is there a director out there that you aspired to be like, or a movie that you always loved? And no, I think, I, th I think, what started me. Uh, I was 15, and I was at a boarding school, and uh, one of my roommates was. Um, this was in Texas. It was in Dallas, uh, was Tommy Lee Jones. He was a couple of years older than I was, and he, he, wasn't, he wasn't the actor then. He was the a kid. Star. He was 17 years old. But he was editor of the Poetry Magazine, and I had just written a poem for a class, and I knew he was editor of the Poetry Magazine, and I gave him this poem, and he said, he read it, and he said, Shmoley, you ought to be a writer. <laughs> and no one had ever, that thought had never occurred to me. That, that uh, job. I had. I wanted to be a high school tennis coach. That <laughs> Good with a racket. Yeah. I was a jock, and so I. The idea of being a writer was very romantic to me, mm -hmm. and I became a writer in in my head only. I, I wrote a little bit, but I didn't really seriously write. And I called myself a writer for years, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a dream, you know. I, I, my my dream was to have a book on a shelf in a library. I thought that would be just the coolest thing, just to see your name on a book. Um, and that's that's how I started. And I, and and then along the way, I got into film. And, and then I started to get hooked on the creative process. It was really fun to make a short film and mm -hmm. think, you know, come up with the ideas and do all the difficult stuff, making it. Um, and it's, it is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, one of the shorts that I'll show at the end of this uh, was, it's about 45 seconds, and, and Justin was my cinematographer. Uh, and uh, it just, I, part of it is it just shows you what you can do in a few hours. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have this finished product and, and it actually has uh, I show it and people respond to it and, and it's, it's kind of rewarding.